Okay, I'm going to go over this uh, review with you, and I'm just going to warn you that I'm not quite used to this pen, so it's going to be look. It's going to look like a second grader writing here. <laughs> just going to be honest with you. Um, so we're going to start with question number one, and uh, first thing we're going to do is take a look at the amplitude, and the amplitude is the number that's right here. So three would be the amplitude. The period is going to be determined by this. Um, number here and we know that the period of a cosine function is 2 pi over b and this number is the b so it's going to be 2 pi over 2 which is pi radians the phase shift that's the uh, horizontal phase shift that's going to be moving to the left pi over 2 it's always opposite what you think there that plus pi over 2 is a little deceptive because it, it appears that it's going to go to the right but it's always opposite the vertical shift is at face value, so um, this is going to be down 1. And then the domain. The domain for a cosine function, since it's periodic, you're looking for the, the two walls of the graph if they begin in the end. But there really is no beginning and ending to a periodic function. So uh, it's going to be all reals, which we can stay all reals, or from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the range of this graph is going to be from negative 4 to 2. And um, the reason for that is basically the bar's been lowered. Let's just take a good look at what this might look like. It's been lowered uh, one unit, so it's down here. And we have an amplitude of 3, so it's going to be from the bar up 3 and down 3. So that would give us negative 4 on the downside and positive 2 on the upside. Moving on to question number 2, the amplitude is 6. Amplitude is never negative, so we're not going to include that negative there. And the period is determined by the 4. We're going to put place 2 pi over 4. And that's going to give us pi over 2 for the period. And then the phase shift, uh, again, is this number here. This time it's going to go to the right, pi over 6 units. The vertical shift is minus 3. Domain is a set of all reals, so again, all reals. And the range, this time uh, we have a range from negative 9, and that's including that negative 9, all the way up to positive 3. And again, if you take a look at where this bar is lowered to, it's been lowered down to the third floor, so to speak, going down three floors. And this is the new reference bar. And our amplitude is 6, so if we go up 6 and down 6, it's going to give us the floor and the ceiling of the graph. The graph will oscillate between those two uh, points. Okay, now this is where it's going to get really challenging for me, so uh, bear with me. On this um, particular graph, we're going to graph, um, well, you see I've already put the lines out, but we have a phase shift of negative pi. The um, period here is going to be 2 pi over 3. That's the period. So from beginning to end, from here to here, it's got to be this, this interval. So uh, my beginning point was negative pi because of this phase shift. If I look down the road, 2 pi over 3 units is going to land me right here. So one complete cycle will be within these two endpoints. And um, on this particular one, the bar has been lowered. We're looking at the sine function. We know that the sine starts at the bar, wherever that may be. Let me change my color here and it'll make it a little bit better. You can see it. So I'm going to start here on the bar and uh, my next point is here and you might be asking do I have to label all these points? Well you have to know how to find them um, but for practical purposes for right now I just didn't include them. So this would be one cycle of this function if you wanted to do more than one, it's not going to be counted wrong because really and truly it's periodic. So uh, let me just call these points out. The interval between these two is going to be, um, if we take one fourth of this, it's going to give me pi over 6 um, 
and that will be the interval from this point to this point. So this point right here is negative 5 over 6, negative 4 over 6, negative 2 over 6, and negative um, 1 over 3. So um, moving on, if we take a look at the number 4, the um, phase shift here is pi over 3 units. So I'm going to go over here to starting here at pi over 3. The period is pi, 2 pi over 2, which is pi units. So again, I've got to look down the road pi units. So if I add pi to this value, I'm going to wind up with, um, this should be 4 pi over 3. I don't know where the, I'm missing a point here, so that should be 4 pi over 3. Actually, this should be over here, so move that 13 pi over 1. Um, let's change that out. thought I was doing myself a favor by labeling these, and uh, was mistaken there. So again, you want to go down the road 4 pi over 3 unit or pi units. And that's going to land you right here 4 pi over 3. So, this is also negative cosine, which means instead of starting up, we're going to start down. And we're going to start at negative 1 half because that's where the uh, amplitude is. And then I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to go max out at 1 half, come back down, and then end where I started. And that gives you one complete cycle of negative 1 half cosine to x minus pi over 3 radians. Okay. Let's take a look at question number five. Um, the graph shows uh, y equals sine x, that's this one right here, and y equals sine 2x. How do I know that? This is g of x right here. Um, the two here tells me I'm going to have two cycles in a 2 pi period. So since these are my only two options, I know that the darker graph, or g of x, is sine 2x, and the lighter graph is one cycle. So this would be um, f of x right here. Uh, I need to find out what A, B, C, D, and E are. I'm going to add E right here. And A, obviously, is going to be uh, an interval point. And if the period is 2 pi, which it is, and you divide that by 4, each interval point is going to be pi over 2 radians. Whoops, pi over 2. And so that's A. B is going to be pi radians. C is going to be 3 pi over 2 radians. And the last point there on that interval is going to be 2 pi. And E is the amplitude. And if you look at the amplitude here, it's 1. OK, that was easy enough. Let's move on to questions 6 through 8. And um, it's referring to the graph uh, given here. And again, we're, we're going back to that domain question. Um, the domain of this graph is going to be all real numbers. So it'll be letter D, due to the fact that the um, left and right endpoints, there, there, there aren't any. It's, it's periodic and means it's continuous always. The range, again, the range does have its restrictions. So the range for this one is going to be letter B. And mainly because the amplitude is 2, you're starting at the bar at negative 1. And so you're going to go up and down 2 from that negative 1. And that's going to give you these, and these um, uh, y values. The period of this graph is going to be determined by the 4. 2 pi over 4 is the same as pi over 2. And so the period here is letter E. Number nine, uh, if, this, if a sinusoid has an amplitude of four and a minimum value of five, what's the maximum? Well, the best thing to do here is just kind of do a little sketch. If you've got um, a graph where the 
amplitude is 4 and you have a minimum at 5. So here at 5 we have, eh, this supposed to be positive 5, um, is our minimum and the amplitude is 4. Well just to get to the middle of the graph you're going to be up here at 9. And then you get to the maximum point of the graph you're going to be up here at 13. Again there's a 4 uh, amplitude of 4 in between each of those. So that would be letter D. And the period of this particular function um, is going to be determined by uh, whatever number is right here. So we have to factor out that 420. And so I'll have 210 sine. We're going to factor out the 420 from inside the parentheses so that we have a single x. And that's going to be plus 2. And um, the period is going to be determined by 420. And so 420 is B. So it's going to be 2 pi, whoops, 2 pi over B, which is 420. So that reduces down to um, pi over 210. That's letter C. I hope those were easy enough. And now let's move on. Once again, to the more challenging questions for me, just graphing. It's kind of awkward with this pen. It jumps around a little bit. Um, what we're going to do here is remember that we're going to use the helper function, and that's going to be cosine. So we're actually going to use this graph as a guide to help us graph this. You notice I've kind of set it up. This is at negative 2 right here. The bar has been lowered down to negative 2. This graph has been um, translated over pi over 2 radians, so it's actually starting right here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch the cosine curve. Since this is negative and I'm starting here at the bar, um, the cosine curve usually starts up because it's a cup, but this time it's going to start down because it's a reflection. So it's actually starting at negative 3. And um, by the way, it's the period of this graph is 2 pi. So I'm actually going to be um, graphing several portions of this. So the next uh, point here is going to be here. Then it's going to max out at negative 1. It's going to make its journey back down here. And I want to end where I started, so I'm going to extend my axis. I did that again. Um, extend this axis to pi, 3 pi over 2. And it's going to end right there. And again, this is just our guide. I'm going to just dot it in. Let's see how this works. It's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> All right. So this is our guide. This just shows us where our asymptotes are. Yay. OK. Sorry, folks. It's been a long day. So the asymptote is going to be wherever there's a zero on the cosine. And you're not going to look up here at this bar because it's not going to hit that bar. It's actually the new bar that we've created. So there's a zero. And here at pi, there's a zero. And I guess if I went back and took this over one more point, I'd have another zero right here. So I'm just going to sketch that in, even though I'm only asked for one period. So um, now, again, since it's tangent, you have to understand that halfway in between each of these two asymptotes, we're going to plant a point, or straight dab in the middle. And since this is negative, it's going to emulate the cotangent curve just different asymptotes. And there you go. And did you have to do two? No, because it says just one. Uh, the period of this graph is going to be simply pi, not 2 pi, because it's always half of its helper function. All right, let's look at number 12. And again, um, 
This time our helper function is going to be sine because cotangent is cosine over sine. And we're trying to find out where to plant those asymptotes. So it's negative, negative sine 2x plus 2 pi over 3. And let's take a look at what's happening here. Uh, this one's been translated over here to 2 pi over 3. Its period is pi, which means the cotangent's period is going to be half of that. Um, so I'm going to just start by graphing. Uh, and the amplitude here is going to be 1 half. So it's not move. It doesn't have a the bar doesn't change. So the x-axis is still going to be the reference bar. And I'm going to start this sine curve right here at negative two pi over three. Because the sine curve always starts at the bar, but this is a reflection graph, so it's going to go down to one half, then back up, then up here to one half, back down. And that is a um, oh well, let's back up. Hang on a sec. I'm not going to start this video over because I just looked at that wrong. Um, let me redraw that in. Sorry about that, folks. Zero is not a point on the graph because it's been moved over. So let's draw that back in. It's this point here, and again, if you were to do your interval points, you would see that the interval points um, are going to be pi over 4. So between each of these points is pi over 4. This point right here is negative pi over 6. So if I go pi over 4, it's going to land me here. So that last point shouldn't have been on the 1 half. It should have been right there. And then it's going to come back down and end where it started. So again, this is just our graph that helps us determine where to plant the asymptotes or build those asymptotes. And so, as you can see, the asymptotes are going to be where the zeros are. And so we're going to have an asymptote here. We're going to have another one here. We're going to have another one here. And now, as we, um, we're we graphing the negative cotangent, which is going to emulate the positive tangent. It just has different asymptotes. Again, halfway between your uh, bars, you're going to have um, you're going to plant a point halfway in between, and then you're going to draw a sketch, I should say, your negative cotangent curves. All right, let's take a look at question number thirteen. This one's slightly easier because there's not so many mo motions here. Uh, transformations, I should say. And um, so this graph is actually the bar has been lowered to negative 1. So I am going to draw that in. And um, the period here is going to be pi. And uh, let me back up. Rewind the tape if I could. I'm going to the the graph that I'm going to use as a helper is going to be the reciprocal function of secant, which is cosine. So I'm going to actually graph or use this um, graph as a helper graph. And uh, cosine always starts up. So this particular graph from the bar is going to be right here. And again, the period is. Pi. So let me put a few points here. This is going to be pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. And the cosine again starts up, and then it goes down, down, up, up. And I really don't even need to dot it in. I could 
so I will I guess and then um, use these points Uh, let me get a color here and draw in the asymptote. So again, the asymptotes are going to occur where the grab, the cosine curve, cro crossed over the reference bar. So it's going to be right there. And then the secant uh, takes on a very interesting shape. And by the way, I'm just going to pull that cosine curve. I'm going to just do one more little piece so that I can put another asymptote there. Um, the cosine curve is actually going to look like a parabola. It actually comes up and hitches up with that max or min. In this case it was the min um, that it hitched up with of the cosine curve. And this one is going to hitch up with the maximum so there you go. And that's one complete cycle. It has the same period as its helper graph. And on number 14, um, taking a look at number 14, we have oh we have quite quite a number of mo motions here. First of all, the bar's been raised one. We have a phase shift negative two pi, and so um, I'm going to start here. Our helper graph is going to be the sine function. So I'm actually going to be graphing negative 2 sine. And I'm not going to write all this out. I'm just going to put the 2 sine and then the rest of this. Uh, so let's just take a look at what the period is. The period is going to be 4 pi, simply because this number here, if you put 2 pi over 1 half, you're going to get 4 pi. So you can see as I count here, um, from this point to this point is 4 pi. And I am graphing the sine function. So the sine function is actually the negative sine function. The sine function always starts at the bar. So I'm going to start right here. And instead of going up, it's going to be the reflection. And the amplitude is 2. So I'm actually going to be down here at negative 1, because that's 1, 2. Um, then I'm going to, at the next point, I'm going to be at, back up here at 1. And at the next point, I'm going to be up at 3. And I'm going to end where I started. And again, this is just your helper graph. It's just going to help you determine where to plant the asymptotes or build the asymptotes. You're going to build the asymptotes where sine is equal to 0 on the reference bar. And so um, I'm going to have asymptotes here and on the y-axis itself and over here at 2 pi. And again, this is much like its uh, co-function. It's going to hook up with the max and min points. This is going to be interesting. Right there. Of these um, two, two graphs. So that's it for graphing. Let's take a look at the final question here. Um, this one is one like today's quiz. We actually... Uh, Remember, this is where the period starts, and this is or the, where the graph starts and where it ends. So this is one period. It's not half of one and half of the other. Um, but first thing you need to do is find the center point. And as you do, you draw it right straight there. You can see that half of the graph is below and half of the graph is up. So the amplitude here is, if you count these, it looks like the, these are one each, but they're actually half. So that by scale, the amplitude is one. B is what uh, determines the period. So let's let's find the period first. Each of these little markings represents a sixth. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six sixths, which is one. So the um, instead of two pi radians, it's one pi radian. And so since it's one, B has to be two because we split the period in half and we know that the period is two pi over b so b has got to be two in order to get this period here the phase shift uh, well you can see from this graph it's obviously the cosine function but it's been moved over to the left um, let's see how many units if we count again by six this is one six two six three six three six is pi over 2. And then the vertical shift, um, 
Well, you can see that this bar right here is our reference bar, so it's been shifted up too. So our equation for this is going to be y is equal to 2 plus the amplitude here is 1, so it's going to be cosine period is 2 x plus pi over 2. And you could put this 2 in the back door, but um, it's just fine where it is. So that concludes this video. I hope you're able to gain something from it. And other than a bunch of laughter over my writing, we'll see you in class tomorrow.